NYPD arrested one person in connection with a string of robberies. This is targeting patrons as they left high-end restaurants and clubs right here in the city. Police say they tried pulling over two suspects in a BMW early yesterday morning in the Flatiron District. Shots were fired by police during the attempted stop. Nobody was struck, but one suspect is still at large. Joining us right now with more information, New York City Police Commissioner Dermot Shea. Nice to have you back on Good Day. Uh, Rosanna, Bianca, thanks for having me. And, and regarding that first picture you showed, thanks, thank you for showing it, if anyone knows where he is. Rosanna, he has 11 open court cases right now. Think about that. How, is this, allowed to, how is this allowed to continue to, 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 to foster like this? Well, w one side will say as long as he shows up at court, then everything is working well. And I would, I would say that everything is not working well. Uh, they forget the victims that are going through the pain of incidents like that and how much damage one person can do. So that's a complete and utter failure in my book. Wow. 11 open court cases. Wow. wow. All right, let's talk about the, the cover of the New York Post today. They're talking about um, the robberies of high-end restaurants. Yep. They go into a little detail, and I'm wondering if you could fill in the blanks for us. They say it's this group that calls themselves OED, own every dollar, and that it's not just one or two of them, it may be as many as 20 of them and their gang members. What do you know about them, and are you any closer to apprehending them? So, so there's a lot of work being done. What, what I will say is we are working closely with all five district attorneys, uh, multiple federal agencies on a, on a, on a task force on this. Uh, there have been some arrests, but the, the problem is, is still ongoing. This boils down to two things, really, uh, nightclubs and then guns. And, and uh, targeting high-end jewelry is what is occurring. Um, there's been, as I said, there's been a couple of arrests. You, you can absolutely expect more arrests as we uh, get closer to hopefully bringing but this to a conclusion are we sooner having rather more, than later. Police Commissioner, are we having more of a gang problem than ever before? It, it feels like it. I, I don't know that I would say that. I mean, the gangs have always been, um, you know, an issue here. We've, we've talked about it for a number of years. I, I liken it back to, I, I tell you, I, you have to look at the incarceration levels. And, and it's a hard topic to talk about, but there's been such a drastic reduction. I think that that's part of what you're seeing play out at the state level. I mean, we're down significantly. Right. And... Many people get out of prison and turn their life around, but unfortunately, we all realize that many do not. And you're seeing that those unintended consequences, I think, um, on the streets at you, times. Of course, 11 open court cases is something that you don't want to deal with, someone that we wouldn't want to encounter on the streets. Um, Commissioner Shea, I want to ask you, you mentioned that guns being, you know, a very big part of this. In the past couple of weeks, we've seen 13-year-olds commit homicides with guns. Um, now, just last week, you had 20 council members send a letter to Governor Hochul asking her to allow jail time. This is for youth gun offenders. Um, sir, as of right now, it kind of facilitates the fact that they can you know, be brought into court and this moves to family court. They are almost immediately released. What is your thoughts on this? Is this something that we're going to see be implemented in the future? Thank, thank you for bringing that up. First, I want to commend the members of the council that spoke up. Uh, you know, I've, I've met with many of them, and I, I've implored them to do that. I, I, I think that silence is part of the problem here. Everyone sees what's going on. And to me, this is not about politics. It never was. This is about keeping New Yorkers safe. So to, to step up there and, and to say that, listen, something's, something's not working right, I, I really applaud them. Um, What's going on? Well, there's a lot of things going on. I think that the good news is small fixes to some existing laws will go a long way. It's not just about juveniles. Juveniles are really tough in terms of you're talking young kids here, and it tears your heart out yeah. to see, you know, how they, how they got to this place. That's why we put such an emphasis on keeping kids out of trouble in the first place. So um, in terms of the family court, there is a couple things that I, we think need to be fixed you know um, when a kid gets arrested making sure that the criminal court and the family court two different judges two different sides each know the whole history and making sure the law allows that like there's a lot to this problem but the good news is i think that with small fixes yeah. it can really go a long way to keeping new yorkers safe
Uh, I want to ask you about NYPD recruitment. It opens October 6th. You guys did something that I think was yep. really great on your end. The first time the NYPD has paid advertisements in targeting LGBTQ community members wow. on your main page that profiles a lot of officers, a bunch of different ranks, yeah. showing them, you know, in real life. However, interesting response to what they did and the Pride March this uh, past May, where they banned uh, NYPD police officers, they, they banned gay and lesbian officers from even being able to walk in the parade. So, so how did this come about uh, from the response, you know, what happened in May? Yeah, I mean, we remember what happened in May, and I, I thought that was unfortunate. You know, um, we're, we're certainly not perfect. I mean, who, who among us really is? Um, we all can do better. Regarding, regarding this recent um, recruitment drive, you know, we, we committed to doing everything possible to, to reach out to all New Yorkers. And, and this is just one segment. And, and we utilized our Gay Officers Action League for some of these uh, posters and outreach that we did. We think it's going to pay dividends. And we would encourage anyone, anyone that wants to be a cop, anyone that hasn't always really felt that the cops represent them, Hmm. Will be a part of the change. What better? What what a what better way to impact and change than being on the inside? So, if you're not sure or if you are sure, reach out to recruitment.com to the NYPD. You can get it through the NYPD's main website and give us a look. And we hope to see you guys marching that break. Yes. They're banned until 2025. Well, hopefully that'll change. Yeah. Police Commissioner, let's talk about traffic in New York City. You've said that you're oh. afraid to even walk across the street. Now we're hearing about reports about people covering their license plates so they don't get, you know, one, they don't have to pay tolls. Two, they don't get caught. If congestion pricing happens, they'll skirt that as well. How do you enforce that? What, what can you do to crack down on, you know, these license plates? I, I think there's two categories there, and it's great that you brought that up. For anyone listening, you know, you can get a summons, and nobody needs a summons. So if, if you have any cover on your license plate, um, even if you can see through it, we know that some people do that um, with, with bad intent. Um, you, don't get a summons. We're going to be cracking down on this in the coming weeks. Um, make sure that your license plate is accurate. Make sure it's uncovered. And uh, do your part, really, to keep New Yorkers safe. Um, listen, Rosanna, I made that statement last week, and I think uh, a lot of New Yorkers feel that way. You bet. Everyone has to do their part. <laughs> Whether you're walking, whether you're riding two wheels, or whether you're in a car, let's let's slow down and do things safe for everyone. So let safe. me ask you, can the police, are the police doing anything to crack down on cyclists who are going the wrong way, not obeying the laws of the road? I mean, there's e-bikes, there's e-scooters. If you are a walker like I am, you know, yeah. you're lucky if you make it across the street. Well, we, well, we are. We're doing a lot in all those categories. We we. Honestly, we probably could do more. We've done a lot of outreach. We see we publicize that outreach at all times, whether you're on four wheels or whether you're on a, a scooter or a bicycle. Uh, we're trying to avoid the, the summonses, uh, but we, we, of course, will uh, as necessary. And we'll also, you know, K Kim Royster is our chief of transportation. She does a really, really good job. Um, she's a really talented woman. Um, in terms of meeting with all the different groups that all have voices in this arena, um, and, and then pinpointing the, the enforcement that we do to where the accidents really are occurring. So, hmm. you know, we're going to continue to do that. And as I said, whether it's riding a bike or driving a car too fast, we have to manage all of that. And, and that's exactly what we intend to do. Police Commissioner Dermot Shea, thank you so much for coming on Good Day New York and trying to keep the city safe. <laughs> Turn it around already. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Police Commissioner. Thank you. All right. Telling you, we're getting real good at going left, right, left. I right know. <laughs>